and welcome to the show. We've got an historic clash in National 1 and Clifton versus Bury St Edmunds in Nat 2 South. But we start off with a tremendous top of the table battle in the North. Hull have been formidable at the Ferrens ground, going 11 home wins from 11 to be top as we come into the end of March. But second place Sedgley Park scoring sensations, including Matt Gallagher and Reese Henderson, will give them a big challenge. The trademark power. Kivali offload, finds his winger, there's Mike Adlard, he's got some space, will he get past the last defender, Stephen Collins? Of course he will! Fantastic. When Mike Adlard is in those positions, you do not stop him. You have to say that that was a great piece of combined play with uh, Tick Cavallo making the really hard yards and then for a prop, a delightful pass and then the link with Mike Adlard and as you rightly said, once he's got away, you ain't going to stop him. Again, now they're calling for it, centre to the safer Turaga yelling for the ball. They almost came to the centre, Reece Dean going oh, round over the top and that's going to come to Keane Naylor to, for the second try on the board for Hull. The forwards lured them in but lurking on the wing was Keane Naylor. So the, the winger had about 15 yards in between him and any Sedgley player so it was uh, easy to execute the try. Well, there's a break for Sedgley Park yeah. and there's the first one. A great start for them. John great Blanchard start. going under the post. That's the first step for Sedgley Park. And we've only played a couple of minutes of this second half. Oh, that all came from where they caught their own kickoff and kept the pressure, kept the pressure. Hull were able to keep them on the 10 yard line and suddenly the break came and uh, great to see a prop backing up and going under the post. Every credit to Sedgley. Back to the right. Straight through the middle. There's a break for Ollie Glass. And this is going to be the second try. Matt Riley, the captain. Bounding over the line. We haven't seen Hull's defence bit like that, certainly not consecutively all season. Sedgley really found their, their game now and uh, it's, uh, the momentum is definitely with them. And, uh, At the moment the twisting comes, Sed Powell keeping their shape. They keep moving and now they go down. And that try is given. Patience is a virtue. Open Shaw, Collins looks for the run, dragged down, but they'll keep moving. Open short all the way out to Tansy, and he's got Andy Riley on the right, and that will go out to Henderson. There's still life in the Tigers yet. Well, that is what Sedgley Park can do. That's what they've done in the last two games with hammering wins. But what it's done here is put them in a very narrow margin of their hosts. Their hosts who lead National 2 North. Collins, I think, is going to come up. Sure, he hits the post. Oh, he's seen it all. Now the backs They're are all involved. In, all the backs are going all in. All of them are driving, trying to twist into. I think Hull might have turned them, though. There's cheers from Hull. That's going to Hull. The pack power's done it again. They have kept the Sedgley Park Tigers' bite at bay. Full time. Hull 24. Sedgley Park 19, Hull are on the march. Um, everybody knew that this was going to be uh, another big game and uh, you know everybody's turned up, the sun's shining so the people that maybe would decide whether they want to go and watch a game of rugby, that wasn't on today, they wanted to come. Just look behind me and you can see there's a great crowd all enjoying themselves. We are in a situation where this is probably the best Hull team that we've seen in the history of the club. So all credit to Gary and all credit to the guys because they, they, they want to play and they want to win. What would it mean for this club to get promotion? We know we've got a team that's capable of going up to National 1 as it stands. So, no, we're, we're all behind it. No problem at all. Roslyn Park and Blackheath have more than 300 years of rugby heritage between them. But while Park are looking up, Blackheath's third tier status is under threat. Last time they met, Park ran away 55-14 victors. Jake Lloyd clearly had that in mind after five minutes. Ex-Saracens hooker Jared Saunders responded, but Craig Holland's miss may have been a sign of things to come. A dizzying 15-minute spell gave Harry Holland a brace and Lloyd another try. 24-5 up, the promotion contenders stunned. Captain Hugo Ellis came off the bench to respond, but no one was stopping Lloyd's hat-trick. While Dave Lewis and Ellis got a scoring and losing bonus, it was Blackheath's day. They had ended a rot of six losses, while Park, clear leaders just weeks ago, are left wondering how they got here. 
Let's start on that one round up 250 miles northwest as Coldy looked to stretch ahead of their promotion rivals at Peyton Field. There were certainly tries on the Wirral. Five minutes after half time, Taunton Titans' Connor Banks converted try drew them level at 26 all. Five more tries would follow and four of them went to Coldy. Ezra Hinchcliffe finishing a burst of three in the last ten minutes for a thumping bonus point win. With Sale FC on their rest week, Cambridge had a chance to close the gap to the top three and they grabbed it with both hands. Joe Green making it four tries in two games. Plymouth Albion only had three players on the bench but came away with a losing bonus thanks to Tom Cairn's second half score here. How crucial could that be? Heading west, Cinderford were firing on all cylinders at Dockham Road with Nathan Taylor grabbing four of their five tries in a powerful pack display. Rams forward Ollie Taylor put his side on the right track early in the second half, but the wait for a first win on the road since the middle of February continues. A mid-table clash at Billsley Common went to Bishop Stortford thanks to their fast start. Josh Stannard proving unstoppable after just 10 minutes of play. Fly half Dan Lewis kept Birmingham Mosley in the contest. 12 of their 17 points went to him, including a stunning interception try, but it was too steep a mountain to climb for a comeback. Chinna wasted no time getting back to winning ways at Kingsley Road. Dean Hammond's brace helping them score five first half tries against Leeds Tykes. The visitors did outscore their opponents after the break though, with Harry Dukes securing a losing bonus point. A first win since the trip to Blackheath earlier this month remains elusive. And what a game in Darlington, having been 17-8 down at half-time, bottom side Tunbridge Juddians took the lead on the hour through Kyle McGee's drive. But this relegation scrap would go to Moden Park as George Shannon capitalised on his own side's pack power for a two-point win in the last ten minutes. What drama! 63 tries across seven National 1 games, the team certainly put on a show in the sun. Find out more about our partners VO at ncarugby.com. Caldy move five points clear of Rosslyn Park ahead of their meeting next week, but Kieran Power's side have a game in hand. Blackheath climb a place. There's only 14 points between 7th and 14th. Clifton were looking for a return to consecutive wins at Station Road, but faced a Bury St Edmunds side unbeaten on the road since November. Went 35-7 down at half-time. Four quick tries from, from Clifton in the first 20 minutes. Very clinical. Um, Bury made... You know, we made quite a few mistakes, we made four mistakes in the first 20 minutes and they, they capitalised on that. Uh, in the second half, I think it was always going to be a game where, uh, you know, Bury came out the blocks and, and, and fired back out against Clifton and the eventual score of 47-34 uh, uh, didn't quite reflect the game. I thought Clifton were very impressive today and probably showed why they're a, they're a top of the table team and challenging for promotion. And uh, if they play the way they have today for the rest of the season, they'll have, they'll have a great chance of going up. Here's the rest of the Nat 2 South action as the other title chasers look to pack their own punch. Starting at the top, Isha's place appeared to be under threat when two quick-fire tries from Old Albanian at the restart took them within two points. But the injury-hit Hertfordshire side could not push on for victory, Harvey Scott grabbing the league leader six of the afternoon at the Woolhams. It was a much easier affair in Cornwall for Red Ruth, scoring five of their seven tries against Canterbury before the half-time whistle, including a brace for Steele Barker. That makes it three unbeaten for Nigel Hambly's side, while Guy Hilton scored the visitors' only try. It's seven consecutive trips home with a loss now. In the Midlands, Leicester Lions' unbeaten home run came under immediate threat when Barnstaple's Ryan Smale drove over after seven minutes. That was the only score the bottom side would get though, as five tries crossed the line at the Lions Fortress, Jamel Hamilton capping it brilliantly. The game of two halves unfolded in West London. Barnes flew out of the blocks, Rob Kirby grabbing the first of three tries in the opening 40 minutes. But the second spell belonged to Ding's Crusaders, who turned to Tom Price as the fly half kicked half of their points tally to take four points back to Bristol. Guernsey put the demons of their last defeat to bed with a bonus point win at the Gables, Daniel Morgan coming off the bench to top it with a brace. But Westcliff made sure they took a bonus point and it was down to teenage hat-trick hero Finn Doyle. Henley Hawks had their noses in front at the break 
after Alex Bradley was found by Terence Babarinza in a blistering counter-attack. Rochford 100's half-time team talk clearly worked. Naji Mundicha getting them ahead for a lead they would not let slip for a first away win since October. And another upset from Hinkley. Level with Worthing Raiders at half-time, Ewan Kelly blew the promotion chasers away with a quick-fire hat-trick. The visitors hammered Hinkley's defence for the final quarter. Curtis Barnes grabbing a brace with three minutes to go, but the Leicester Road side held on for victory. What a day of drama! 27 of the 68 tries scored came after half-time to keep fans guessing. Worthing's shock slip at Hinkley allows Clifton to climb a place. The top four now just six points apart. Guernsey and Hinkley climb, while Rochford 100 can enjoy their week. Let's wrap things up in Nat 2 North, as Rotherham look to keep up in the North East. There'd be no problem for Martin Jenkinson's side. Connor Field's hat-trick giving them half of their six-try haul at Tyndale. It brought an end to the hosts' six-game winning run, but Rob Parker's instinctive work at this set-piece did give them a losing bonus point. Stourbridge were back to their best in this most local of local derbies, as seven of their nine tries, including the first of Joe Heatley's brace, were scored in the first 40 minutes. It marked a stark contrast for Bourneville after last week's comeback win, while Ethan Walker was spirited at the restart, they made the 11-mile journey home empty-handed. The sun really is shining on Locktonians at the moment, as the Herefordshire side found the try line seven times without response from Bladen. Six of those scores came from the home side's pack, but the backs got in on the action as well, Charlie Grimes finishing off a superb move in the second half. At the Crumb, Loughborough students put their Bourneville loss behind them with a nine-try dismantling of Harrogate. The announcement of David Doherty's decision to step down as director of rugby at the end of the season leaves Harrogate looking for new blood on and off the field. There were prospects of a better day for fellow strugglers Huddersfield when Will Milner's wonderful pass found Kean Stewart after 13 minutes to take the lead against Sheffield Tigers. The South Yorkshire side, though, had other ideas, as the masterful Mark Ireland showed great vision for Greg Mellor to score the third of four tries in an easy win at the end. 63 miles west, a tug-of-war encounter at Hare Lane appeared to be going Wharfdale's way, thanks to Tom Davidson's boot with just two minutes left. Chester had regained the lead twice in the game and saved the third time until the very last play, Charlie Craven burrowing his way to victory. And look at those celebrations. And there was a real show at Brantingham Park. Fylde went into the break behind by just two points when Henry Hadfield burst through Hull Ionian's defence. It would end up, though, being a double victory for that city. Kobe Opoku Fofi responding at the restart as the hosts secured a first win of the season against any of the top five. Well, nil scores are rare at this level and two in one day is extremely unusual. Two sides ahead at half-time ended up losing. And as we enter the final month of the season, Hull have one foot in National 1 for next season. But Rotherham and Sedgley Park are still close enough to capitalise on any slip-ups. And just before we go, here are a few things you may have missed from round 25. National League Rugby Clubs made an appearance at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for Saracen's Premiership game against Bristol. Partner clubs Rochford 100, Bishop Stortford and Old Albanian were allocated a shirt number in the build-ups of the game, represented by that player in front of 60,000 plus fans and viewers on TV. Rochford 100 had England star Billy Vunipola, Bishop Stortford were on Scotland International Andy Christie's shirt and former Rosslyn Park man Tom Wollstonecroft sported Old Albanian. They were certainly part of the 27-23 win in North London. And Round 25's Player of the Week, sponsored by Courtiers, goes to Clifton's Alex Howman who simply tore through Bury St Edmunds on the way to a hat-trick in their seven-try win. That's it from the Ferrans ground. After a heated contest in the sun, it's Hull's march to history that continues. See you next week.